Good morning, church. Good morning. I hate vain thoughts, but thy law do I love. Thou art my hiding place and my shield. I hope in thy word. Depart from me, ye evildoers, for I will keep the commandments of my God. Uphold me according unto thy word, that I may live, and let me not be ashamed of my hope. Hold thou me up, and I shall be saved, and I will have respect unto thy statutes continually. Thou hast trodden down all them that err from, from thy statutes, for their deceit is falsehood. Thou puttest away all the wicked of the earth like dross. Therefore, I love thy testimonies. My flesh trembleth for fear of thee, and I am afraid of thy judgments. I read to you from the 119th Division of Psalms, verses 113 to 120. And may the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his word. Amen. Most Holy Father, we come to you this morning with bowed down heads, thanking and praising you because you're a good God and you can do anything but fail. We just want to thank you, Father, for one more day. Thank you that you allow us to get up this morning in our right mind. Get dressed and make you here safely to the house of prayer. We just want to ask you to bless those that are in the high places, those that are in authority. Father, help us to be obedient. Father, we just want to ask you to touch today in a mighty way those that are here, those that are on their way, those that don't know the way. Touch them too, Father. Touch Deacon Ridgeway, Father, in his absence this morning. And fill that void, Father, so that he can find a way to hear the word of God. Touch Sister Hart today. Don't know if she's going to be here, God, but you know. Just touch her in a mighty way. Brother Jesse, Brother Robert, Brother Danny, Father, just touch and as we go through your word today, touch our teacher so that the word can come forth and we can learn to be better doers as well as hearers. In your son Jesus' name, we give the praise and the glory forever. Amen. 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 And with that, we'll call Deacon Mike up to share the word. Oh, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> That's what happens when you get up in the dark. <laughs> Thanks, sis. <laughs> That that particular um, area of my life, I can take I can take criticism, and especially if it's, it's constructive criticism and given to me in the right spirit, I'm all for it. What's that lesson today? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm just getting off track. Forgive me, y'all. Oh yes, yes indeed. Today's lesson is uh, entitled. Saul anointed king. Ooh. Now, uh, when I got to this particular one, when I got to, when I was doing this, I was thinking. So I said, "Oh, this is a very interesting thing." As I was reading it, I caught I caught a couple of similarities between Saul and someone else. One of them is me. Well, uh, 
but uh, to somebody else who is a, uh, a little bit, a, a lot of it, and more influential than myself. Um, our text lesson text is 1 Samuel chapter 9, verses, verses 25 through the end of that chapter. Then it picks up in chapter 10, verse 1. Then it picks up again at chapter 10, verse 6 through 16. So, got a, we're fragmented there. Just got one fragment, because at 9.25 goes to 10.1. Anyway, uh, it's about um, Samuel, excuse me, yes, yeah, Samuel anointing Saul king. Now, we all know, or hopefully we all remember what happened when uh, Saul was, um, uh, when uh, uh, the, the children of Israel, they wanted to be like everybody else. <laughs> Give us a king. Give us a king. And... It's one of those things that, uh, uh, and they were warned by Saul, you really don't want this, but if, hey, uh, you, this is what you really want, you're going to get it. But he gave them a, he gave them a, a warning that, that their lives are going to be disrupted much more than what they were beforehand. So, anyway, Saul anointed king. Now, we, have a, we only have a skeleton crew here, so we're going to have to double and triple up mm -hmm. because uh, Deacon uh, Ridgeway is not is not here today and neither is uh, Sister Katie. So we're going to have to like uh, really uh, double and triple up here. Um, I'm going to ask, uh, I'm going to ask Deacon Prince, can you start us off, read uh, 1 Samuel 9, 25 through up to and including 10, 1, please. And when they were come down from the high places into the city, Samuel communed with Saul up on the top of the house. And they arose early. And it came to pass about the spring of the day that Samuel called Saul to the top of the house, saying, Up, that I may send thee away. And Saul arose, and they went out, both of them. He and Samuel abode, abroad, abroad. And as they were going down to the end of the city, Samuel said unto Saul, Bid the servant pass on before us. And he passed on, but stand, but stand thou still a while that I may show thee the word of God. Then Samuel took a veil right. a, a vial, a vial, yeah. a vial of oil and poured it upon his head and kissed him and said, it, Is it not because the Lord hath anointed thee to be captain over his inheritance? Okay, interesting. That word, captain. Captain Owens, who's a okay. captain. Okay, uh, I'm going to ask uh, Sister Ann, go through, uh, verse, start on verse 6, and go through to, uh, I guess, verse 10, please. Okay. And the Spirit of the Lord will come up on thee, and thou shalt prophesy with them, and show be turned into another another man. And let it be, when these signs are come upon thee, that thou do as occasionally serve thee, O God is with thee. And thou shalt go down go down before me to Gilgal. Gilgal, yeah. Gilgal, and behold, I will come down unto thee to other burnt offerings and to sacrifice, sacrifices of peace offering, seven days shall you tarry till I come to thee and show thee what thou shalt do. And it was so that when he had turned his back to go from Samuel, God gave him another heart, and all those signs came to pass that day. And when they came thither to the hill, behold, 
a company of prophets met him, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, and he prophesied among them. Okay, thank you. Sister Brenda, can you go 11 through 13, please? 11. And it came to pass, when all that knew him before time saw that, behold, he prophesied among the prophets. Then the people said one to another, What is this that is come up to the son of Kish? The Saul also among the prophets, and one of the same place answered and said, But who is their father? Therefore it became a proverb, Is Saul also among the prophets? And when he had made an end of the prophecy, see, he came to the high place. Sister Joan, can you uh, go from 14 all the way to, to 16, please? And Saul's uncle said unto him and to his servant, Whether what ye? And he said to seek the answers. And when he saw that they were nowhere, he came to Samuel. And Saul's uncle said, Tell me, I pray thee, what Samuel said unto you. And Saul said unto his uncle, He told us plainly, that the asses were found, but of the matter of the kingdom whereof Samuel spake, he told them not. All right. Amen. Thank you. Um, I don't know if you all uh, looked, read, read the introduction. Um, they were talking to the guy, the, the, the uh, expositor said, it says, just as there are different forms of government. Now, when, he, when I read that, the first thing I thought about so I said, yeah, in the different forms of government. government now, what what the world has is not what God wants. Because see, when, you, when the world has left God out, no, excuse me, they didn't leave him out, they kicked him out. They didn't want him involved. Period. Exactly. So, the gentleman that his, he is, he backed off and he said, go ahead, you're going to mess it up. And he's right. He's right. Look at the chaos that we have now. And ours is supposed to be the best government out there right now? No, no. The best government is what the Israelis, is, is what, the, what the Jews, what the children of Israel had. But they were unsatisfied. They wanted to be part of the world. Now, this is a lesson to us also. Don't be quick to go with the world. Don't be quick to go with the world. Anyway, our lesson is broken down into four, in four uh, parts. Saul consecrated king. 9:25 through 10:1, Samuel's commission for Saul, verse uh, chapter 10, 6 through 8, Saul's change of heart, verses 9 through 13, and Saul conceals his consecration. Now I thought that was kind of interesting. Saul conceals his consecration. All right, we're going to start the first the first portion. Okay, but before we do that, I want to I want to I want to do a, a little introduction myself. I want to back up a little bit. I want to go to <coughs> First Samuel nine. Um, I want us nine and two. I'm going to introduce us who Saul is because we haven't really we we didn't know who Saul was. If you don't, unless of course you read these these two these chapters. Saul. First of all, uh, I'm going to go from Saul. I'm going to go from the first, from the first, from the first uh, uh, verse in chapter nine. Now there was a man, and there was a man of Benjamin, the tribe of Benjamin, that is, whose name was Kish, the son of Baal, the son of Zeror, the son of Bacharath, the son of Aphiah, a Benjamite, a mighty man of power. Mighty man of power. Now, when you look at this right here, he's a mighty man of power. That means he was influential because he had he had he had cash. He had money. He was rich. Verse two, and he had a son whose name was Saul. Okay, this is the description of Saul, a choice young man and a goodly and and a goodly. <coughs> and there was none among the children of Israel a goodlier person than he, from his shoulders. And upward, he was higher than any of the people. So he was pretty, he was a pretty big guy, pretty tall guy. Okay, so we know he's um, from the Benjamin, he's from the, the tribe of Benjamin. 
And remember I said something about similarities? Saul was a Benjamite. Paul, whose name was Saul, was also from the tribe of Benjamin. So I thought that was interesting. I was sitting there looking at that and said, wait a minute, hold it, that makes two of them. <laughs> so, but anyway, that, there's probably more, but I just, those two just came to mind real quick. Anyway, go down a little bit further down to 15 through 17. I'm going to read this real quick too. Now the Lord told Samuel, now Samuel's a prophet. The Lord told Samuel in his ear a day before Saul came, because Saul came looking for donkeys that, that escaped wall, that wandered off or whatever, from, from uh, his father's property. Now the Lord had told Samuel in his, in his ear a day before Saul came, saying, Tomorrow, about this time, I will send thee a man out of the land of Benjamin, and thou shalt anoint him to be captain over my people Israel, that he may save my people out of the hand of the Philistines. For I have looked upon my people, because their cry is come unto me. And when Samuel saw Saul, the Lord said unto him, Behold the man who I spoke, though I spake of, spake to thee of, this same shall reign over my people. And so He's been identified, God, God told him that he was going to be there, and he was identified when, when Saul saw him. Okay, now we start with our lesson. 925. And when they were come, now who's, who's this they is? They is uh, uh, Samuel and Saul. And when they were come from the high place into the city, they were worshiping. Because there was a sacrifice. There was a sacrifice, and after the sacrifice, they came in back into the city. Samuel communed with Saul upon the top of the house. Okay. It's, I guess that's a resting place because of um, the way, the way, the, the way the, uh, that they designed the homes back then. And they arose early, and it came to pass upon up, about the spring of the day, beginning of the day, that Samuel called Saul to the top of the house, saying, Up, that I may send thee away. And Saul arose, and they went out, both of them, he and Samuel, abroad. Now, when I, read, when I, when I was reading this, verse 25, I, I noticed something, um, I noticed something in, my, in my study Bible. And I thought it was very interesting, so I wanted to make mention, I wanted to make mention of this. Um, after the feast, Samuel and Saul had a long conversation on the house, on the house top before retiring for the, for, the, for the evening. Houses then had flat roofs on which people walked and talked and slept because of the fresh, cool air. Right? They also agreed on the continuing, on the coming assembly of all Israel to choose officially the king and proclaim the kingdom itself. Now that comes down later, but that's what they basically were talking about and, and everything. They were, that's what they were communing about, what's going on and what's going to be happening. And Saul wasn't really all that uh, confident at this time at, 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 at accepting this, but he will be convinced later. Okay. Um, 26 and 27, and they, rose, or, and they arose early, and it came to pass about the spring of the day that Samuel called Saul to the top of the house, saying, Up that I may send thee away. And Saul arose, and they went out, both of them, he and Samuel abroad. And as they were going down to the end of the city, Samuel said to Saul, Bid the servant pass on before us. And he passed on. But stand thou still a while, that I may show thee the word of God. Now, he had a private, he had a private talk, and here's, here's where uh, uh, different things are going to be explained. Some things are going to be explained to uh, Saul. And one of the things that I wanted to mention was about, uh, again, like I said, this private talk that they were going to have. And that's basically when he was, they were going to be telling, uh, Samuel told Saul what's going to be happening. This stuff is going to be happening. You're going to see this. You're going to see that. Now, if you read this, this section between 
uh, 1 and 6, you'll see that that's what, that's what happened. He was uh, describing the things that were going to be happening later on that day. And that's, that's, that was just, they, I guess they didn't want to put all that stuff in there, but that's exactly, they didn't want to put that in our lesson. But that's what it was. He was being, he was being prepared by Samuel for upcoming services. Anyway, going to verse number 1 on 10-1. Then Samuel took a vial of oil and poured it upon his head and kissed him and said, Is it not because the Lord hath anointed thee to be captain over his inheritance? This is the actual um, time in which, this is the actual time in which he uh, anointed uh, uh, Saul to be king. Now, if you remember reading that we had something that we had before, a uh, while back about David, King David. King David was anointed. He was anointed before he was installed as king. I, I, I forgot how many years it was. I think about, I don't remember how many years, but it was, I think it was at least 10. But he knew he was going to be king, but he had to wait. He had to wait. Now, same thing with, same thing with Saul. Saul was told he was going to be the king. It's all new to him. So he, uh, um, he was being told, being prepared by Samuel about what's going to be happening. Now, when you look at this section right here, you see the, the, the actual, the actual uh, anointing with the oil happened in verse 10-1. Verse so, and it was very quick. They, didn't, they really didn't give too much of a description on what, was in, what it entailed. Now, if you looked at the expositor, it just it, it says it gives you it gives you kind of a hint as to what had happened. Um, it says taking a vial of oil, a vial of oil, Samuel anointed Saul. Whether practiced in every case, the anointing of oil was a means of consecrating prophets, priests, and kings in Israel. It was symbolic of God's approval of the one being anointed and the coming of God's spirit upon that person. To empower him in his service. Notice it said, come upon, not come in. That's one of the things that we get, that we, are, that we have been blessed with, as opposed to the Old Testament. The Spirit of God comes into our, comes in and we, and we, we, are, we become one with, we become one with God. Okay, so uh, that's basically the first portion of the uh, of the outline, um, uh, nine, uh, Saul, Saul consecrated king. Does anybody have any questions or uh, anything that they would like to add to this? No. Okay. We'll go on to the second part. The second part, Samuel's commission for Saul. Now that's verses six through eight. Now remember, I just mentioned that. Um, I just mentioned that uh, uh, between two, from two to five, there were, they were, he would, they would give, they would give us a description of, um, they would tell us what was what, what Samuel said to Saul. I'm getting, I'm getting the S's mixed up here. But Samuel said to Saul what was going to be happening later on that day. And so now, when you pick up with six, uh, verse six, this is actually some of the things that are, that are going to be happening that, that are happening. So, verse 6, And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy with them. Who is the them? Prophesy the with them. The prophets. That's right. That's one of the things that it was uh, mentioned in the two to, would be verses 2 to 5. He was supposed to meet prophets on the way. Okay. Uh, shall uh, prophesy with them, and shall be turned into another man. Turned into another man. What does that mean? Yeah, uh, and if you read, if you read a little bit further, it'll say, it'll say what actually what happened. It's not like born. It's it's a lot a like born again, but it's not quite born again. And reading the lesson, what I didn't understand is how come he had to be so. The Lord had to give him a different heart and transform him and do all those kind of things. I was just wondering why did that have to take place. For him, and he reigned, I think, from 1010 to 1040, but he 
he did, actually was was he a good king? I don't think he was. Well, we find that he had a lot of failings. Okay. Like, like all but he had to be like made over. Like. Another thing you got to remember. I was going to put. I was going to point that out, but since you brought that up, I'm going to say. I'm, I'm going to say it now. A lot of the things. Uh, first of all, Saul did not really. Uh, uh, he had no confidence in this. He had no confidence in this because he said, I, I, "I'm from the. I'm from the smallest tribe." Oh, oh. So uh, you can't lead. You can't lead from the back. You got to lead it from the front. You got to lead from the front. So therefore, when you get in something like that, you gotta you gotta be instilled with the confidence that God is with you, and that's one of the things that is being that's going to be discussed in this in this later on. Uh, but anyway, that's that's one of the things I wanted to say. It says, uh, "The Spirit of the Lord shall come upon thee." Signs that God was with him. Okay. Now. Uh, um, Verse 7, and let it be with, when these signs are come unto thee, that thou do on this occasion serve thee, for God is with thee. Just, it says it right there, plain and simple, that God is with thee. Now, there's something that I wanted to read out of the Amplified. I thought the Amplified brought this out in a, lot, in a better manner than which the King James normally comes out. In the Amplified, it says this, verse 7, when these signs meet you, Okay, the signs that we were talking about between 2 and 5. Do whatever you find to be done, for God is with you. God is with you. Okay, have the confidence. God is with you. Okay? As long as you are in his will, God is with you. Okay. 8. And thou shalt go down before me to Gilgal. And behold, I will come down unto thee to offer burnt offerings and to sacrifice sacrifices of peace offerings. Seven days shalt thou tarry till I come to thee and show thee what thou shalt do. Okay. Now, when you look at that, I'm looking at that. I said, uh, as I was reading further, I, for some reason... I just did not um, catch everything. Maybe I did catch it, or I don't know. But the tarrying part, I didn't. I didn't see that. Maybe that came in after the reading, after after where I stopped reading. But in any case, I, I apologize. That I'll, I apologize for not getting that that down correctly. But what I was thinking, I'm looking at this, and he was told what to do. Okay. And the, the expositor said something that was very interesting. Now we know what happens afterwards, towards the end. He becomes um, he becomes um, disobedient somewhat, uh, and, and and he would make excuses and all kinds of things like that. And uh, he was he was wandering he was wandering out of the will of God. He was told to do one thing, to wipe out everything, animals, everything. But what did he do? Kept the animals and quote use them as a sacrifice. And what's that line? Obedience is better than sacrifice. And so that's that. So we know that later on he's going to have some failings, just like we all have failings. Now, um, Saul was further instructed to go ahead to to the, go ahead of Samuel to Gilgal. Together they would offer sacrifices. Saul was to wait there seven days until Samuel arrived. Now this is a this is an expositor. This may have been a test of his obedience, as seen later. Saul would have problems with patience and obedience. Now it's it's interesting that they that the uh, expositor had one other line in here that I really thought was fantastic to to, uh, to uh, uh, read and to get into your head. Right after that, in Israel's monarchy, royal authority was derived and secondary. The king was always to be under the Lord's authority. Okay, that's, that's true. We all are under the Lord's authority. But here's the thing about it. How did it go? It says, since the Lord's true prophets were conduits through which the divine word came to kings. So therefore, uh, the word comes from God to the prophets and given to the king. 
So the king, he may be the king, but he ain't the authority. He ain't right. the authority. The, the, the authority, uh, the authority is still God. Which right. I, which I thought was, I thought I'd say, you know, that's that is pretty, that's pretty cool, pretty unique, and everything. But that's the thing about it. These prophets were in, in a functionally superior position to the royalty. And I thought that was a very interesting observation that the uh, expositor made. Now, um, I got that and I was thinking, I said, you know, that is one of the things that um, was interesting to me, that uh, God's authority is not questioned. God is in control. You may be the king. It's somewhat similar to um, British, Britain. They got a queen. The queen's got no power. She's just a figurehead. She's just a figurehead. The, 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 uh, the power is in Parliament. That's where the power, the power is. She does what Parliament basically has, agree, has dictated through the people. Uh, I thought it was interesting. That's why I, when I was really talking about the, uh, the, in, in the introduction of forms of government, it made me think about that, and especially when I read that portion in the expositor, I thought that was fantastic, a fantastic observation. But in any case, that is um, Saul's commission, uh, excuse me, Samuel's commission for Saul. Um, I, 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 if anyone has anything they want to add, or Sister Brenda? One was that he told them when they went to talk, they had times that it was private. Mm -hmm. okay. Because if you notice, soon as someone knows what someone done said, they got a comment. You got a comment over here, comment when it, some things are private. But I went also to coming to the point, point where it says, the spirit of the Lord came upon me. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it was a difference. Yeah. And reason that he said another man is because we need to renew our mind, mm -hmm. and his mind had to be renewed. Right. <laughs> and so when he, I, I, I listened to this last part, and he was talking about how we waste so many, much time and opportunity because we forget we need the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us. And I like how it said, you know, in this lesson telling us, when we don't do it God's way with God, tragic happens. He to let us know our mind have to be recreated. We have to become a new person. But we, when God calls us to do it, He has to prepare us. Mm -hmm. He didn't just throw Him into. Right. He prepared him. and that's what we need to be pulling out from. At least that's what I'm pulling out from. Mm -hmm. Is that you think you can do? You think you got it? When you was. think you can do it without God's help, that's most likely when you're going to fail. Because, oh, you know, I can do this, I can do that. You know, that's borderline pride. To me, that's borderline pride. And I have that, hey, I have that problem too. I have that problem too. I sit there and I say, oh, I don't, why, why do I have to bother? I don't need to bother God about that. Uh, God loves to hear from us. That's right. <laughs> Sister John? And being a, a lesson, the people was not, they was dissatisfied with Samuel. He thought that actually they was dissatisfied with God. So then the Lord said, then I'm going to give you a king. But, but the Lord knew what kind of king Saul was going to be yeah. before he was even that. Okay. So he gave them what, you know, and so that's that's the end of it. That's it. You know what I'm, what I'm going to say. That's mm -hmm. the essence of mm -hmm. what happened because he knew what was going to happen because they were so disgruntled. Well, he told them. He told them. He told Samuel. He told Samuel, and Samuel told the people right. what's going to happen. This right. is going to happen. Right. And so there was no surprise. There's no surprise. It won't be. It shouldn't be. It wouldn't be a surprise in the future. But right now, oh, they're happy. They got a king. Yeah. Well, not right now. Yeah. They're going to be happy. Oh, we got a king, just right. like the rest of us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to be like the rest of the world. You want to be different. Yeah. Sister Prince. Oh yeah. I just want to say that we should keep in mind that God chose. 
saw. Yes, it was the, a purpose behind that. The people <laughs> wanted a king. Right. And God really was upset by the fact that they dismissed him. Mm -hmm. But he went on and chose Saul. Yeah. And in the first part of this chapter, it starts describing Saul, mm -hmm. a mm -hmm. goodly, yeah. good-looking man, right. mm -hmm. stood taller than all the rest, mm -hmm. a likely figure that the people look on. would look on. Mm -hmm. See, but, but still God chose him. And then when he went through Samuel to uh, get to Saul, he gave him all the signs to look out for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because just imagine us in, the, in Saul's shoes. Yeah. And nothing in here tells us that Saul was religious. Right. Nothing. No, no. Actually, can you kind of get a hint that he wasn't? Right. Yeah. right. Mm -hmm. Nothing in here says that. So now... He was out looking for his father's donkey. Yeah, right. That's all he That's wanted to do. He didn't want no part of none of this other stuff. Mm -hmm. But the signs were there, Samuel told him, was what you're going to encounter. And I'm sure he was he was doubtful then. Because he said, why are you telling me? I'm from the least of the tribes. You know, why are you putting this on me? But as he left Samuel, and all of these things started coming yep. that Samuel told him was going to happen. Mm -hmm. That was confirmation. Right. Yes, whether you want to accept it or not, it's you. Uh -huh. right. I want to say something to I, 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 I'm glad you said that. So, so you're saying that God, you didn't have, the person had to have no religion, had to be religious. God just made us pick. God chose him. He can do that any and, time he wants to. Right, and he started out the, when God chose him, he started out in a good place. Right. Yeah, humble. Yeah. So he was humble at first. He started mm -hmm. out good. Yeah. Okay. That's right. But we'll see what happens on down the line. <laughs> <laughs> on a side note, on a side note to this, right. he's from Benjamin. You know the Messiah wasn't going to be coming through Benjamin. Mm -hmm. The Messiah was going to be coming through Judah. Yeah. Right. And so, oh, yeah, right. Yeah, and I like to think when I saw that the first that time, when I first read it many years ago, I was like, well, why does he go there? Yeah. But I said, hey, he knows best. I don't know. <laughs> well, was Paul from the tribe of Benjamin, too? Yeah. Also, yeah, that's what I, oh, I thought. Yeah, I heard you say that. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, and look what Paul did before God well, took him. Same thing. Yeah. Interesting. We're, we're interesting about the name Paul. Yeah. I'll talk about that later. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, goodness, where am I? Oh, change of heart. Saul's change of heart. Verses 9 through 13. Okay. Uh, the signs of verses 2 to 8 are starting to show, are going to be, uh, 2 through um, two through 5 are beginning to manifest. Mm -hmm. And it was so that when he had turned back, turned his back to go from Samuel, God gave him another heart. Now, gave him another heart. Gave him another, um, I guess you could, well, yeah, it says heart. I'm thinking another manner of thinking, thinking, putting God in, keeping your mind on God. Okay, keep your mind on God, your heart's going to be right. Okay, and all those signs came to pass that day. Okay, and when they came thither to the hill, behold, a company of prophets met him. Now that was prophesied by, by Samuel to him in verses 2 to 5. And met him, and the Spirit of God came upon him. Didn't come into him, came upon him. Came upon him. Okay? And he prophesied among them. And it came to pass when all that knew him before time saw that, be, behold, he prophesied among the prophets. Look, here we go, Sister Prince. <laughs> yeah. Then the people said one to another, what is this that has come unto the son of Kish? Is Saul also among the prophets? Now I read in here, the prophets are usually comes, uh, the prophets are, are basically nothing, it's not something that's handed down, but it's kind of like is because it was handed down from uh, Aaron to his sons, to their sons. Now the whole line of Levi was like that. Okay, they were, they were the priests. So you would think that, that that's, the way, that's the way it was going. 
And same thing with, especially now with royalty in, 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 the, in, the, in the age that we are in now, it came through lineage. So, that's when it says, it saw also among the prophets. Okay, then it goes, and one of the same place answered and said, but who is their father? <laughs> and at first time I didn't understand that, and I had to continue to read and think about that, and uh, I still couldn't get it. And of course I get into the expository and say, oh, that's what they meant, what I just said. You know, his father, his father isn't a, was, wasn't a prophet. <laughs> so where is he getting this from? <laughs> where is he getting this from? Who, who, who taught him how to prophet? Who taught him all this? The Spirit of God came upon him. The Spirit of God. Therefore, it became a proverb, is Saul also among the proverb, prophets? And when he had made an end of prophesying, he came to the high place. Okay? Now, I was looking at that, and I got, had, to, had to laugh. God gave him another heart. Okay, God gave him another direction, another heart for him. For him. Follow, just, just like just, God says, follow, do what I say. Do what I say, and you will be successful. Same thing for all of us. Do what, we, do what he says, and we'll be successful. No matter what it looks like, we will be successful. Okay, verse 10. A company of prophets met him. And he prophesied, he prophesied among them. That goes back to verse 5, when, he, when, when, uh, when, when Samuel told him what was going to happen. Verse 11, and it came to pass when all that knew him before time saw that, it says, a change came over Saul that was evident to those who knew him before time. I mean, same thing with us. Uh, we were out in the world, at least I know I was, and... We did all, we did whatever we wanted to do, whatever made us feel good, whatever made us do. We, we just did, we, quote, we did our own thing. And uh, all our family knows us. Oh, that might, he's too doggone wild for me. I'm, I'm still away from that guy. All of a sudden they see, and I, I, I'm not swearing as much as I used to. I can't say I don't swear at all. I'm not going to tell that lie. Sometimes, sometimes I, I kind of like losing. But... My language has changed, and so therefore, uh, uh, um, my family sees that sees the difference, and now they don't cuss around. I got a sister who can talk like a sailor, a drunken sailor, and when I'm around, she will, she will, she will, she will, she will holster that. That will not. She will keep as much of that profanity out, because she's. Oh, I know you don't like to hear that. I said, Yeah, you're right. I don't like to hear that, but you know, so. They recognize a change that has come upon them. Just like these people here, they recognize a change that came upon Saul. Is Saul also among the prophets? They were wondering at the visible change in Saul. Now, there's something in the expositor too that I wanted to read, and I thought this was pretty interesting. This interchange in Saul reflected in his outward life. Okay? The old thing is, they, you can, when you see something, you know something happened. So, so that those who saw, who saw Saul asked if he was really Saul. <laughs> right. I mean, that is amazing. That's, a, that's one heck of a change. That's one heck of a change. So anyway, um, I thought that I thought that was a very interesting part. One other thing too. One other thing too. Um, one person also called into question the, the validity of the whole experience, even ridiculing Saul. The logic underlying the saying probably was as follows: To be a prophet, one might be expected to have a father who is a prophet, yet Kish, Saul's father, is not a prophet. So that was also an expositor. That's on page 106 in case anybody uh, with, the, with the larger edition. I thought those were the two things that really stood out. They doubted Saul's legitimacy, and he didn't quite qualify because, he didn't qualify because of birth or by education. He wasn't educated in it. He wasn't educated in that. But you know what? Neither was Peter. 
Neither were the fishermen. They were fishermen. They were not. They were. They were not theologians. They were fishermen. So, so God can change anybody. He can. He, whoever He wants, He can. Whoever He chooses, He will equip. And He equipped Saul. Saul was equipped. It's just that God does not. God does not force us. He equips us, and it's up to us to conform to what He wants us to do. Okay. Anyone? Anyone have a, 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 a any questions or anything to add to to uh, this Saul's change of heart? So, Dan. His change of heart. I was thinking about it. And I was looking at a scripture that I remember reading one time before. Would it? Would this be the same change of heart for Saul? It's in Ezekiel. It's in Ezekiel eleven <laughs> nineteen. Oh, I thought you were going to go someplace else with that. Go ahead. Uh-uh. <laughs> no. And it said that then I would give them one part and I would put a new spirit within them and take the stony part out of their flesh and give them a heart of flesh. Okay. That's speaking of, what's that speaking of? Future time from here. Okay. Because okay. they're speaking of the time in which... Uh, um, Israel will, will, will all of a sudden realize and say, hey, yeah, Jesus is the Messiah, okay? Then that, that stone heart of saying, oh, he's not the Messiah. He's not the Messiah. I'm not going to worship him. To finding out, oh, he was the Messiah. We killed the Messiah. And now all of a sudden they got a new focus. Their focus is on, okay, uh, what does it say? We, uh, we, 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 uh, we, we uh, mourn upon him because we pierced him. They're going to. They're going to. This is this is going to be happening in the near. In, I won't say near future because I don't know when it's going to happen. But it's going to be happening in the future because that's prophesied. Prophesied by Ezekiel. So they're really But it's not quite either because see they don't because there was no realization of that uh, uh, Jesus was the Messiah because Jesus wasn't born yet in this particular instance. It was more or less a change of direction. But it is somewhat similar. It's somewhat similar to being born again. So it really has nothing to do with Saul's change of heart. Uh, not in that. In not in, in that, that. That sense. Not in that sense. Correct. Oh, okay. Okay, sister, sister Joan, and then sister Brenda. I, I think it's more or less like you said, being born again. Once we accept Christ, mm -hmm. we start to transform. Mm -hmm. We have a new heart. We have a heart of Christ. We should have that. No, I have a friend that uh, uh, they never want to hear about the Lord, and uh, she did was accepted Christ. If I didn't know it was her face, it would be her. Uh, She's totally different. Something like, something like this transformation yeah. is soft. her face, so I know it's her. But when she speaks, not her. It's somebody else. <laughs> Christ is all in her. But yes. I know her from before. And I'm yeah. like, oh my God. When you, when you called her up, she said, praise the Lord. She's somebody that will never hear his name. <laughs> so I just think when we, once we take on, we transform and we born again and, and we love him and we're walking and it's being and everything, we transform. We have yes, that. yes. We have that. Yes. We transform. We get born again. Yeah, we uh, have that. Sister Brenda. I, I just wanted to add to that because remember at this time the spirit came up on me. Yes, now, it wasn't the future, within. Yes, and the future and what we have now is within. Oh. He, he abides in us. And then they said, come up on. It came on. Yes. And that, that all of it was the Holy Spirit that we can guide. But I wanted to, uh, uh, when I listened to you all and, and reading the scripture, I looked and see when you was talking, you was talking about how people forget and in the beginning, 10-6, mm -hmm. it was prophesied. Mm -hmm. Here, we at the end, it's fulfilling. Yes. They okay. saw what it was in the beginning. That's why you could talk about, uh, then when you said that about the uh, transform to another man, mm -hmm. now we at what the what the another man means, mm -hmm. transform. So that's why the two... Uh, it's a change, and even though you don't talk about it in the beginning, it's at the end because now you see what's been prophesied. Mm -hmm. yeah. With signs, with signs following. Yeah, there right. you go. Right. Okay, uh, we're gonna go on to the last section, and the last section is Saul's. Con Saul conceals his consecration, mm -hmm. and I thought this was interesting. 
This was kind of cute. Uh, uh, and some of the, I hate to say this because it makes me feel foolish, but it's some of the things that I do too, I, especially when I'm trying to be evasive without lying, because I don't want to lie, and I'll just, I'll just say certain things, and I'm not lying, but I haven't told the whole truth. I didn't lie though. And Saul's uncle said unto him and to his servant, whither went ye? And he said, to seek the asses, and when we saw that they were nowhere, we came to Samuel. And Saul's uncle said, Tell me, I pray thee, what Samuel said unto you. 16. And Saul said unto his uncle, He told us plainly that the asses were found. That's it? That's all he said to him? That's all he said to him? That's all he said to him. And that was the truth. That was the truth. But he didn't reveal the whole thing. He didn't reveal what else that Samuel said to him. And I thought that was hilarious. Because like I said, I know I play, I play those games, but I play those games just for, just for the joke of it all. But uh, uh, he did not. He did not tell him the whole thing. Now, whether Samuel told him not to until it was revealed, or we don't know. We don't know, but it could have been, it may have been. I'd like to think that it I'd like to think that it was. I'd like to I'd like to believe, think and believe that it was, but I don't have any scripture or scriptural uh, uh, evidence that says that. I'd like to think that, yes, Samuel may have told him, and if he did, he just did not tell him. Cool. That's fine. That's fine. I kind of like rushed through that last portion. I'm sorry. Um, uh, did you uh, like from now? I guess I, I guess when, if, if no one has any more questions, I'll ask the superintendent to come up. But uh, I thought that was a very interesting. I thought that was a very interesting uh, lesson. I, I know I, one thing that I did learn about this. Uh, you got to do what the spirit says. You got to do what the spirit says because God is leading. And you always remember, even though it's the spirit, God is leading. Amen. Amen. Thank, thank you, thank you, Mike. I just wanted to say here, when we talked about that changed heart, and we know that nobody can change their heart but God. He changed his heart, which then would give him a change of attitude and a change of outlook. Because at this point, Saul could not even imagine what was being told to him. That's right. You know, mm -hmm. I'm going to be a captain over all of God's people. <laughs> really? <laughs> so he needed a change of heart. Right. Right. And the thing was, you know, when God, we hear, we hear said all the time, nobody knows the heart. But God. Right, right. And that's the truth. Because if you remember last week in chapter 8, when uh, God and Samuel were having their conversation, and God had to let Samuel know, he's not, he's not rejecting, rejecting you. He's rejecting me. He said, but I want you to tell the people what they're going to get. How could he tell? How could he tell the people what they were going to get if he didn't know Saul's heart? See, and, and he listed it all in chapter 8, verses 12 through uh, 17. He said, and, and uh, he will appoint him captains over thousands and captains over fifties, and will set them to hear his ground, and to reap his harvest, and to make his instruments of war, and instruments of tear. He was going to use them as workhorses. Some of them were going to even be running in front of the chariots. And then he was going to take their women, remember, and put them in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And they was going to have to do all this cooking for all these people. You know, they're gonna. Hey, he's gonna tax you. Yes. Yeah. Those people were never taxed before. Right. But this is what you asked him for, and this is what you're going to get. So, 
God knows the heart. Saul, anointed king, who would have ever thought? He wouldn't. And as far as the uncle, I'm sure when Saul got back, he it still was a lot to digest. Yeah. He didn't he he put it as far away from him as he could. <laughs> and and he didn't say anything to him about it. He said, Yeah, we went out looking for the donkey. We were told by Sandy, don't worry about the donkeys, just pay a price. They've been found. And that was the end of the conversation. Right there. All I can do is encourage us to continue to study because every week it gets better. And as Deacon Mike said, he saw certain parts of this lesson way back when. But then when it comes back around, we tend to get more and more out of it, things that we didn't get before. So just stay in the Word and be ready for next week. And with that, we'll ask Deacon Prince to dismiss the class. Years ago, we uh, had a